vaporizer nozzle I've ever been able to get to do that. In this video we're going to be testing this particular nozzle that came off of a garden spray bottle. This uh, particular type of item here, you see I just cut the end off of that. I have bored the hole out just a little bit so it is a little bit bigger and we have also added a new feature. We're going to be injecting air into one side of this 90 and oil into the other side. And we're gonna observe just how fine of a miss this particular nozzle can get. Now in the last video we seen where just this device alone sprays mist out of it. I might even cut this tube off at the end of this experiment and see if adding a tube causes some type of laminar stripping away of molecules to further the vaporization process because I'm under the impression something of that nature might be happening. So let's get on with it and see uh, what we can do here. And it's like a freaking lightning rainstorm outside right now. About 10 o'clock at night. Let me get some safety glasses on around this death trap here. And let's see what we can do. Hopefully uh, everything works out all right. I have to give you a heart attack okay so here we go I'm gonna start the oil it's coming up pretty slow and I want to start a little bit of air here I don't know if you can see that oil working its way up through the line that's about our flow rate and yeah, that's a really nice oil mist Coming out of there pretty good. Oh boy, never ready. That's not silk lining, of course. It'll go out the second that I take that off. I'm gonna add more oil. Oh man, I don't know if I want to try lighting that. That's very spattery. Great. And again, not self-sustaining. However, does make a nice atomizer. Whew. Let me kick on some vent fans and we'll uh, get our head together on that little test. Oh man, it's still kind of smoky. So we've seen how this thing does do some, uh, oh wow. It's got some pretty good spray to it. Let's try that one more time. Oil's slow to start there. Okay. Yeah, this thing has potential. Look at that spray. So that nozzle there, I think I like it better than just a T. And next we're gonna be trying that one over there. Okay, we're gonna do one more test on that nozzle. This time we have it closed all the way. So it should behave differently. It um, was open about three quarters of a turn from the test that we just seen. Closing it all the way should give us a higher rate of atomization, but I do not know for sure. Let's see if we are in the camera frame here. Here's we are. So let's get the oil going. 
That's probably quite a bit for that small of a valve opening. Uh-oh. My pressure up just a hair. Oh yeah. That's incredible. Get the torch ready here. Okay, torch is ready. vaporizer nozzle I've ever been able to get to do that. So let's do a quick recap of what we just saw there. Basically I bought this $5 jug, chopped the end off of it, soldered it to a piece of pipe, and I drilled that hole out to 330 seconds I believe. Yes, 330 seconds. And in the position we just saw, the nozzle is tightened all the way down to the finest mist possible. The reservoir oil tank pressure is at about uh, 65. What we have here is a tank full of oil. This right here is a pressure tank that the compressor is actually hooked up to. This pressure tank goes up to 135 PSI before these, this transducer kicks off the compressor. That pressure is distributed to the pressure regulator which is connected to the tank so that way we have regulated oil pressure in the tank this check valve or I'm sorry this needle valve controls the flow rate whereas this controls the pressure over here we have a small air tank that's only being used because it's an air siphon tank I use on experiments to pump fluids basically it's just a convenient way to hook my other air compressor up to this air line and we were running at about 85 PSI in the experiment we saw. Um, the needle valve was cracked about three quarters open, three quarter of a turn. And that is the only oil vaporizer nozzle I've ever seen that could burn oil like that, that I've built anyway. And that cost me about $4. So some of the ones online can cost up to 300 bucks I've seen, some of the fancy um, air atomized oil ones so that's a significant savings and I am definitely loving this tip I think this is gonna be the nozzle that might end up in this other burner here it's hard to say I mean I still haven't tested this one out man I am making one hell of a mess in the name of science right <laughs> so there you have it uh, eventually what I'm seeing happen here is this this oil pump is eventually just going to be used as a water pump for my steam blaster that I built my steam degreaser and I'm probably just going to get a bigger air compressor to do this because if I had this air compressor here it can provide the flow needed for the air and for the oil I could turn that into an oil tank and just uh, replumb it to work the way we need it to and that's only a $130 air compressor right there. So if you look at the prices of some of these high pressure oil pumps, I mean, it's, it's a good deal. Plus you have an oil tank. So I'm gonna go ahead and post this and um, we'll talk about it. If you guys got any more suggestions, let me know what you think. Definitely like this nozzle. Still gonna test this one out, but I'm pretty sure that one stole the day right there. That. Uh, turns out to be a, a very good investment on the four bucks. So I don't have an environment where I can test this thing right now. So I just wanted to see if it would work and um, just get some feedback on what's going on. 
and we'll see where we go from there. It'll be nice to do some daylight testing, but it's just so windy that I can't do anything outside anyway. So we're trapped and that's what we got.